This is the most powerful jet dragster ever built. 10,000 pounds of thrust, 20,000 horsepower. It's called the Green Mamba, driven by jet car veteran and the elder statesman of the sport, Doug Rose. The Green Mamba, built to terrorize drag strips all across the country, but now doing its thing burning cars. A jet car burn, the most awesome display of smoke and fire and fury ever seen. Take a full-size automobile, chain it to the tailpipe of a jet dragster, and let it happen. Doug Rose explains a car burn. A guy wants to know what happened to the car if you put this car behind the jet engine. So we tried it a few times, and it rolled the car out of the way. Then somebody said, well, why don't we chain it together? So we chained the car and the race car together, and it just blew a hole right through the car. So um, later on, when I built my car, I started working out some even more interesting ways to do it, like through the back, the front, the side. Uh, uh, this last weekend, I was trying a new thing where I flipped cars over with the blast. It was 20 years ago, while Doug was driving Walt Arfon's Green Monster, that he suffered the most horrendous accident in jet car racing. At speeds of over 150 miles an hour, he smacked the guardrail and lost both of his legs. The crash happened so quickly, Doug never realized the seriousness of his condition. I didn't know, uh, I didn't know they were, my legs were cut off at the impact. And I turned the car on, and it was an uphill shutoff area. So uh, I turned, when the car turned around, I was heading back down toward the starting line. So I coasted down the hill, and I used the guardrail as a brake because I couldn't reach the brake pedal. At least I thought I couldn't reach it. Well, when I went to get out of the car, I found out why. My legs were gone uh, below the knee. And so I got out of the car, and I laid on the track, and I waited for uh, them to come down and pick me up. And uh, I was... I, it didn't really hurt like I thought something like that should hurt. It just felt like it had a real bad case of asphalt rash. But um, my wife at that time, she came up and she got all shook up about it. And the guys came by from the rescue wagon. They had volunteer fire department and rescue wagon there. And uh, I told them to you know, get a tourniquet on it. Well, anyway, they loaded me in the ambulance seat and they got me in the thing and they're streaming down the track. It's, red, it's, it's wet. And this guy's just smoking the hides, right? And he goes down, I look out the window, and then this is guardrail coming up because in front, behind the starting line, I had to make a right turn and then go down around the hill because this track is up on the side of a mountain. So I said, you better slow down, guy. You're not going to make the turn. And his buddy says, you better listen to him. He knows what he's talking about, right? Because what did I just do? Smack the guardrail. Broadway Bob Metzler rides on the nose of the powerful Green Mamba Jet Dragster. Just one of the many shows that Doug Rose puts on here at Great Lakes Dragway. After the accident and years of therapy, Doug built the Green Mamba and continued jet car racing, a true inspiration to everyone in the sport. He is the granddaddy of jet cars and is really quite philosophical about his handicap. 
I have a different attitude because there's so much more out there to do. There's, there's places to go, things to do. It just slowed me down a little bit. So I can't run as fast as I could, and I can't feel a metal muffin squishing between my toes anymore. So uh, anyway, there was uh, this funny, this guy I know out in California, Doug Brown, has got a, a jet dragster. And we used to race a lot together. And after the race, like Orange County and stuff like that, we would go to this restaurant. And one of the things we did, you know, you're talking about having fun, we'd be sitting there, and I'd put my leg up like this on the seat over where he was sitting. And then he, the waitress would come by, and he said, get your leg out of there. Well, yeah, I don't have any room here. Every time somebody would come by, I'd stick my leg in his lap or something like that. Finally, here this gal comes with a whole tray full of dishes, right? He reaches over on the side of his table, on his table like that, takes his steak knife and goes, he sticks it in the old leg like The waitress drops all this stuff and runs back to the kitchen, and she would not come out. She would have got, the manager had to do the whole ball of wax. And he was mad. Monster Truck Maniacs, this is for you. Great Lakes Dragway is putting on the most incredible display of 4x4 monster truck action you've ever seen. Monster trucks, they're unbelievable. Giant earth mover tires mounted underneath a pickup truck with over 2,000 horsepower. They're metal crushing machines. Bigfoot started this phenomenon about 10 years ago, and now there's trucks from all over the country, and drivers spend hundreds and thousands of dollars to build the truck that'll topple the king. High-flying, car-crushing action, and the fans love it. The highlight of all monster truck races is the high-flying, car-crushing drag races. 10,000 pounds of steel and 2,000 horsepower flying through the air. The phenomenon of monster trucks has become a legitimate motorsport. What was once a hobby has become a competitive, arena-filling spectacle of unleashed gargantuans leaping airborne over junk cars. Lakes Dragway, the place to be for Monster Madness. Wheelie cars, there's nothing like it in any form of motorsports. 3,000 horsepower, supercharged, fuel-injected, alcohol-burning, funny car engine stuffed in the back seat of a car and designed to do one thing travel down the quarter mile with its front wheels 13 feet in the air. 
Side-by-side action, the fans love it. Shooting showers of sparks off their tail skids. You want excitement? You want wheels up action? Check this out. The kings of the wheelie cars are the father and son team of Jack and Toby Ermintrout. Side by side, they throw fans all across the country, but they've added something new to their act. The tug of war, a battle between father and son. They've taken the rear of Toby's windwalker and connected it with a giant metal bar to the back of a powerful Emmy under glass. The Ermintrouts have perfected this unique act in drag racing, and Jack's going to tell us exactly what's going to happen. What we're about to do here is a tug of war. As you can see, both cars are hooked together with a solid steel bar. What we'll do is get in the cars, fire them up, put them in gear, step on the gas, and whoever pulls, who's the winner. As the old man, fast Jack Ermintrout, gets ready to go in the Hemi under glass, his son Toby pours the water in front of the rear tires. He learned this trade from his father. He's been doing it for five years. It's the only job he's ever had. It's very, very dangerous, but the kid loves it. He loves to do battle with his father. He loves to kick his butt. But the old man is always up for the challenge. Car tug of war, an unpredictable display of fire, horsepower, and smoke. and I'm a stunt man. I've been known as the Human Torch, which is the hottest act around, due to the reason that I set myself on fire and run out down the crowd, in front of the crowd, on the racetrack, or whatever. In my auto explosion, I place bombs around my car that are in the trunk area, under the hood, outside the car. Then I put on my suit, and I climb into the back seat of my car. Uh, this thing is wired, all the wires leading into. I have a countdown from 10 to zero. At zero, I ignite my bombs. This will engulf the car in flames. The flames will go 30, 40, 50 feet up in the air. The car is totally engulfed in flames. And I have a few seconds to get out before I do get into the dangerous part of being burnt. As I come out, my back is on fire. The back of my suit is completely on fire, all the way down to my legs from my head down. Flames are going 10 to 15 feet in the air. Then I proceed to run to a predetermined spot where my fire extinguisher and somebody that I hope is not mad at me is waiting to put me out. I've never been burnt doing this act, and I've been doing it for about eight years. The crowd reaction of these stunts has just been spectacular everywhere. On the auto explosion, like I said, I've always got good response on it, because come out, uh, people realize just, you know, you know what a fire can do to you to begin with, and to see somebody set themselves on fire on purpose and come out and be able to walk out of it, it just amazes people, and they've been real responsive to it. Um, I've enjoyed doing it for the people. In the steel wall act, I stand this car up uh, on the rear bumper, I block it up with a couple of two befores. Then this car is set on fire, and I'm in a, another automobile. This car that I'm driving is not specially prepared 
There's no roll cages. There's no reinforcement in this car. It's just a car that is taken off the streets, or in this case, out of junkyards. Uh, the only thing I do to it is I put my own safety belt in it, and it's a lap belt, and I wear a helmet, and I wear my fireproof jacket, because the fire will pass through the car when I hit it. I like hitting the car at about 60 miles an hour. This will cause the car to flip up, over, and behind me, hopefully not landing on top of me. If I hit it any slower, I endanger myself of having the car fall on top of me. The car I'm driving then catch on fire, then I'm in danger. The car that I hit is just totally demolished. I've knocked the engines out of it. I've broken them in half. I've, it's just, every one of them's different, but it's just a, a smashing success, and it's, uh, everybody enjoys it. They love to see cars crash. Simon Dave Miller is my name. And my car behind me is a 1955 Thunderbird powered on nitromethane. It took us six months to build this car. We were really rushed to get it done. Uh, we wanted to get involved with the nostalgia racing, becoming one of the more popular uh, events now in, in the sport of drag racing throughout the country. Uh, a lot of money tied up in this car. The body we have uh, about twenty thousand dollars in, and then the normal chassis deal and the motors and so forth. Uh, it's a hundred thousand dollar piece. Uh, we're going to campaign this car throughout the country at all nostalgia events that we can find. Try to do some Ford work and try to be the fastest uh, nostalgia car in the world. Tom McEwen's 57 Chevy was the first nostalgia fuel car. Uh, this 1955 T-Bird of mine is the second nostalgia fuel car. The, the popularity of these two cars is growing immensely day by day. The operation of this car is the same as any other fuel funny car or a fuel dragster. Uh, there's maintenance between rounds, just like there is in uh, all the professional fuel classes. This is not a weak motor. The one that Tommy Cunin's using is not a weak motor. Our cars are duplicates of the fuel cars that run at the national events. As a matter of fact, you'll be able to watch uh, McEwen and myself at all IHRA events this year, which is all out competition. As the season goes by and we get the aerodynamics figured out on our nostalgic cars, our ETs will get better and our mile per hour will increase. But most of all, what's important is to have safe rides. Uh, if we don't have these cars slick enough to go the 260s and 70s or to go the 520s, we won't. We'll be happy with the 550s at 220, 230. I think you'll see it. You'll see good side-by-side -side competition in our nostalgia racing. Think of a giant roller skate with a big balloon blown up and then released. That's a jet dragster. Technically, it's a tube chassis constructed from chrome molly tubing surrounded by aluminum panels for a streamlined look. The engines are a variety, from J34 Westinghouse jet engines to the large J60 of Doug Rose's Green Mamba. Jet cars are exhibition vehicles that tour the country, dazzling fans with outrageous nighttime firefights and fireball burner pops. They are tremendous crowd pleasers and come in a wide assortment of designs. The most popular car in the circuit belongs to the quickest and fastest lady in the sport, Aggie Hendricks. Traveled down the quarter mile quicker and faster than any other jet racer. She's running the lap's time of 5.43 seconds at almost 300 miles an hour. I'm Aggie Hendricks. I'm the uh, part owner and operator of the, jet, the Odyssey Jet Dragster 
It's uh, currently uh, one of the uh, quicker running races. We've run 5.46 seconds elapsed time in a quarter mile, and we've run 293.35 miles an hour, which is a personal best, and it's definitely a best for the female aspect of drag racing. We have, uh, we're quite proud of our machine. Uh, it's, it's always been a state-of-the-art machine, even though it has a few years on it now. It's always been one of the leaders of the pack. Um, I've been driving, personally, for nine years now. God, I can't believe that, but it's one of the things you get hooked on it and you stay with it and uh, I think the attractive aspect of drag racing is that you're self-employed as a result you have to be self-motivated uh, you pick your own hours the person that you work for you only work for them one day and that's the track operator and you try and do as good a job as you possibly can for them and as good a job as you possibly can for the spectator who are essentially the people that are putting the bread and butter on my plate and they're the people that provide us with the instant gratification that we receive when we come back up the return road then they give us the the cheers and the, the uh, response that they give us it's uh it's kind of like being in show business there's a lot of things that we do on the line uh as long as far as the fire show and, and the burner pops our balls and burner pops and the reason that we do those is primarily for show and I think that the jet cars are definitely more spectacular at night during the, than during the day but um, we could go up and, and stage the car and go run it down the track and it wouldn't be necessary to do any of the extraneous things that we do but that's the fun part that's what we enjoy doing and besides you wouldn't want to run a full tank of fuel down the track because it'll break the baffles in the tank and, and rip the tank mount physically off the chassis. Uh, because of the, uh, the forward G's and the uh, backward G's when you uh, decelerate. myself out there. I suppose I'm an adrenaline junkie and I'll be the first one to admit it. Um, in the wintertime we find other things to do but in the summertime I'm always anxious to go back out racing. by other women and secondarily by men, spectators, and by my peers. And I think over the years that we've proven that we run a safe operation, we're competitive, we're fair, and I think that uh, over the years we've become a respected team. Uh, the, the females in the business uh, are very, very supportive. The women out there, they go, oh, this is really great, and you're doing a job, and you're really representing us, and, and it's really for them that, you know, that I want to do well because I, you know, I don't want to shame my sex.
Okay, Jet Car fans, get ready. We're going to take you for a trip around the country. Here we are at Maple Grove Raceway, right outside of Reading, Pennsylvania, for a battle between Dick Rosberg's Fighting Irish, taking on the powerful Kendall Warrior, Ford T-Bird, of Boom Boom, Bobby Van Skyver. Burner popping their way to the starting line. These two guys put on the best fire show in all of Jet Car Racing. NHRA starter Buster Couch brings the two powerful machines to the line and ready to send them down the quarter mile. The noise is deafening, they're off. Van Skyver moved first, Rossberg drives around him. The Fighting Irish wins it with a 643, 251 miles an hour. Now we're here at Raceway Park, English Town, New Jersey. Bogus Bob Elliott taking on the king of the jet car racers, Roger Ramjet Dustin, in the Black and Decker special. What a fire show these guys are putting on here tonight, lighting up the nighttime sky with their burner pops. Roger Dustin, the king of jet car racing, the man that invented this sport. He brought this idea to NHRA and they bought it and here we are with two of the best of the business on the starting line here at Raceway Park. The fire blast coming out of Dustin's tailpipe, bringing it to the starting line, they're off. Look at the spark shooting out of the tailpipes. You can't get much closer than this. And Dustin takes the win at 6.30 at almost 250 miles an hour. This is the beautiful Ford Thunderbird Jet Funny Car of Al Hanna. He calls it the Eastern Raider. He's taking on one of the baddest boys in the business, Dickie Rosberg, the beautiful Fighting Irish out of Detroit, Michigan. Look at the starting line firefight these guys are having. Both cars are powered by the identical Westinghouse J34 jet engine. Rosberg with one of the best fire shows in the business really knows how to thrill the fans. His fire literally lights the rubber on the track on fire. Bringing it to the line, the two powerful machines ready to go at it side by side and take a jet propelled trip at over 250 miles an hour. Staging very carefully, bringing it on up into the beam. Burner popping their way to the starting line, thrilling the fans here. They're off. And Rosberg's got the advantage. He's going for it all the way. Now, there's nothing like jet cars at night. You've seen them in the day, but look what they do to the nighttime sky. The fastest woman in the sport, Ms. Aggie Hendricks, driving her Odyssey, taking on the Star Jet. Here it is, a man versus woman battle. It's a battle of the sexes, and it's the war that Aggie usually wins. 